Simeon Tillen, a boy, age three. Mother's name, Mami Tillen. Father's name, Jala Tillen. Last address, Jatono. Patrick Tillen. Patrick Tiller. Patrick is a boy, age five. Mother's name, Mommy Tiller. Father's name, Jala Tiller. The last address before the events is Ball Mines Bridge area. The Red Cross Family Tracing Network, the program that brings together people who have lost contact with each other. I'm Frank Lobo, court name is the DP for the Dog Pound. I'm a announcer and DJ Coombs. I'm pretty scared that if President Taylor leaves uh, ceremoniously, uh, that will cause a complete havoc, serious one. I may not be even sitting here. June 4th, hundreds of miles from the Liberian capital of Monrovia, the leader of the rebel army, the Lurd, Liberians United for Reconciliation and Democracy, is monitoring events. Instead of being flown off to jail, as the war crimes tribunal had hoped, Charles Taylor has flown home. Ghanaian ministers insist they never officially heard the request to arrest him. Taylor is back home, now the battle continues. We will overrun the city. We can assure the people that we will overrun the city. We have the military capability, but we've been delayed because we've been afraid of bloodshed and we want to protect our civilian. We have no other alternative now but to move in the city. So when does it begin? When does when does the assault on Monrovia begin? And will you will the you wait? The battle begin today. I'm going to pass the order now. No more stop. How are you, Ray? No more stop. In the following weeks, the Lurd reached Monrovia two times. People called them World War I and World War II. Each time, the rebels pulled back under U.S. pressure. The Lurd insisted they would not stop fighting until Taylor was removed. Taylor said he would not leave until the peacekeepers arrived. We will fight street to street, house to house, and we'll defeat them.
what you've seen in terms of morale, weaponry and numbers, do you think Lerd would be able to take Monrovia? I've travelled with the Lerd extensively over the last 12 months. They've had a lot of difficulty in moving men and ammunition from their controlled territories in the north. And that's fundamentally changed now. I think the possibility of, of a renewed offensive against Monrovia is, is, is definitely very likely. Freelance journalist James Brabazon speaking to us from Tubmanburg. It feels quite strange to be here. There were some very horrific things that happened a year ago while I was here. Executions, torture, disemboweling, even ritual cannibalism. I original son of God, I'm eating a hat. They can help you make the protection strong when you eat your enemy, when you eat a hat. So it will make my protection heal. Oh, I'm ready to eat, huh? Yes, oh, come right with you, boy. The rebels themselves, life just carries on as normal. Incidents that happened 12 months ago completely fade into the past. But it's impossible not to feel a sense of foreboding, knowing that if the rebels go into Monrovia, exactly those kind of things would happen again. The war you are fighting, don't fire behind your friend. The now you want to lay a war. So you have men, you fire according to your fire position. And don't run. A coalition of Taylor's old enemies from the Civil War in the 90s, the Lerd claimed that the president excluded them from their rightful positions in Liberia's army. After four years of fighting, the Lerd controls 70% of the country. Their only objective is to remove Taylor from power. Taylor should come down. You should come down. You've agreed to a ceasefire. How long do you think you will be on ceasefire here? I have given them the 72 hours discussion. Because we will not wait for long for our civilian population to suffer without him stepping down or any agreement fruitful to the Liberian people. We will take action. I have enough men to take over Monrovia. Enough. And I have the military capability to take over Monrovia. And that 72 hours begins now? Now from today's date. Right. You said earlier today that you fear there may be another attack. What was your prediction? Today is Friday. I predict that if they don't attack within the next week, they will not attack. But if they continue the same belligerent attitude, I will expect them for, that, for them to attack. They want power. They want power, and if they think that the only way for them to get that power is to attack Monrovia before the peacekeepers come, they will do that. What do you say? I love Liberia, and I think that my staying here, we can do, I can contribute more. I personally feel that if all the people who are left here in 1980, 1985, and 1990 had stayed here, we wouldn't be in this situation because the best and the brightest have left. Are you afraid at all? Of course. <laughs> if I wasn't afraid, then uh, I, I don't think I wouldn't be, I would be human. <laughs> On July 8th, George Bush arrived in Africa for a five-nation tour. He wanted the focus to be his $15 billion pledge to fight AIDS. But war in Liberia is intruding on his message. Liberians hoped the president would send the Marines. But for the time being, they are happy to have 32 soldiers on the ground. Their mission? Assess humanitarian conditions. Most Liberians are really quite pro-American. Their culture is very much a product of America's culture. They feel ties, they have relatives in America, and they look to America for help. So the emphasis now is to try to make an orderly transition to a new situation and a freer situation, and to try to help these suffering Liberian people. So we're not interested in propping up the Taylor regime. What we are interested in is uh, getting on to a better era for Liberia. With George Bush in Africa and American Marines in Monrovia, 
the Lerd did not attack as pledged. The Lerd has approximately 4,000 fighters. Among them, there is a unit of 63 women. While the Lerd claim that their weapons are captured from Taylor, they are in fact heavily supplied from Guinea. Arms and ammunition are cheap and plentiful in Africa. Each rifle costs less than 20 US dollars. Heavy machine guns are critical for the rebels. They were used extensively during the first two attacks to punch their way through government positions outside Monrovia. So, K1, yeah. what's the situation today? No, we are ready, we are prepared. So what's this movement here? What's going on here? No, we are getting prepared to move on Monrovia back. Black Diamond. You're a very famous rebel. <laughs> Lots of people have heard of Black Diamond. Do you enjoy fighting? Yes. Are you a good soldier? Oh, yes. The soldier women are in law and they are commander. But when I get to Morovia, everybody will know what I'm fighting for. I'm not fighting for riches or to become president or either my father to be president of Liberia. But we are fighting for the free citizens of Liberia to be free. We want equal rights and justice. The Bush administration is pressing the Liberian leader to leave the country. He's seen by many as the biggest impediment to peace in the region and has been indicted for alleged war crimes in neighboring Sierra Leone. In 1980, Samuel Doe seized power in a deadly coup. Despite a decade of human rights abuses, Doe cemented relations with Washington by remaining faithful to America's Cold War agenda. In December 1989, Charles Taylor launched his uprising and within months had control of most of the country. Before he could claim victory, West African troops intervened and President Doe was killed by a rival warlord. Civil war ensued and over the next six years, a quarter of a million Liberians lost their lives. We did fight. And we say that we only accept a process that will lead to democratic elections and will submit to that process. In 1997, in an election organized and sanctioned by the UN, Charles Taylor became the 21st president of Liberia. All of us that went to school in America always prayed that one day we could set up an American-style system here, free speech, free press, a rule of law. This is what we've always wanted to do, and that's what we set out to do. Taylor's election did not bring peace. War spread to Sierra Leone and threatened to engulf all of West Africa. Charles Taylor is accused of creating and supporting the RUF, the Sierra Leonean army, responsible for some of the worst atrocities in modern history. He now faces the possibility of life behind bars for crimes committed in Sierra Leone. I conducted, I led a seven year civil rising in this country with no abuses of our people. And you know I would not support any such abuse in any other country. It was wrong, it was improper, it should have never happened, and those that did it should be accountable. And Charles Taylor is prepared to stand accountable for whatever he did in Liberia. With his indictment, Charles Taylor joined Slobodan Milosevic as the only heads of state in history to be charged as war criminals while serving in office. Charles Taylor was the central kingpin of the joint criminal enterprise and that uh, he was the one who allowed, sustained, aided, abetted, nurtured and, uh, and caused uh, this tragedy both in, uh, in Sierra Leone, in Guinea, in Liberia, in Cote d'Ivoire and uh, uh, all of West Africa was in his, his grips. These soldiers have few choices. Flee to refugee camps, 
starve, or join the rebels. War gives young men with no future a strange dignity. How are you, Kabila? This Adela, who are you going for? The Lerd claim to represent all 16 indigenous tribes of Liberia. They say that Taylor and his government are descendants of Americo-Liberian colonists who have exploited them since they first arrived from America. Liberian government officials are not enemies. Taylor is the only enemy. Boom! 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 Then we send our prayer for that white our people with water go. While many of the rebels are Mandingos, Muslim traders with tribal cousins across the border in Guinea, they are not fundamentalists. This war is fueled by hunger for power and money, not religion. After a quarter of a century of conflict, nearly half of Liberia's three million citizens are displaced. 30,000 IDPs, internally displaced people, live in the national stadium. Basically, we are doing a distribution of uh, non-food items and, uh, and food items to the IDP and, uh, and also some refugee population at the SKD stadium. The ICRC so far, We've been distributing mainly non-food items, so uh, this food distribution is a uh, sign of, uh, of an emergency. Come, America! Come, America! So where do you live? Where is your home? I live inside here. Room 19. Yeah, where I have lived myself. I saw the family over there, up, they cook there, then they come up here. Where are your children now? My children are here. Ten that sleep in here, because all here. Are. You would want the U.S. to come here to Liberia? No. No. I want you, I don't want you to go back now and say, I want you to be here now for us. <laughs> now they, you, beside God, you're the only hope we got now. So where are you going? I'm going now in Morovia and he did all and kept on dressing like a woman. Chief of Staff is moving his men out of Tubmanburg towards the front lines. They hope to cut off essential parts of the city and then relaunch a further attack to try and take the rest of the city. The timing is two weeks. There are more men on the move now than I've ever seen in my history of travelling with the Lerd. There is peace in the house of the Lord. There is healing in the house of the Lord. There is blessing in the house of the Lord. And we all... And we all... Tell the people now May we all the song to the people. supposed to be having a There's national so prayer rally. There's so many people that have but, um, died. There are not that many people. Children. What does that tell us? <laughs> I think as far as I think people want peace. And they want a peacekeeping force. They want concrete action right now. It's not lots of big words. 
and highfalutin English. They have called upon me to leave. I have said yes, but I have said to them, it does not make sense because if I were to leave this country before the peacekeeping troops arrive in this city, I see disaster. I see trouble. I see murder, mayhem. I see rape. I see total destruction. So it is important. It is important for the international community to act and to act now to bring peacekeepers to Liberia and bring them now. Yes. <laughs> On the afternoon of July 18th, the man charged with defending the city is already under attack. Are you General Dill? Yeah, George. How are you? I'm all right. I don't know, you're, as you say, you're in the wrong town or the right town when there is serious fighting. Yeah, for the past two days, we've been in serious combat. Yeah. I think people should just stay calm in my room. But with you, you think you're not scary with a kind of artillery weapon you are hearing? Of course I get scared, but. but but panic kind of. But why you think people will not panic? Because they say they, where we are fighting now, there is two, almost three display camps before Morovia. And if, they, they, with the sun they hear me now, people are already leaving from here Morovia because they are hearing the, 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 the launching sound very well. Things of guerrilla warfare, you cannot say I will totally stop the men, but we are trying our best to see if we can stop them. What do we want to happen now that at least an international force can enter the Thank you very much. Thank you too. We are area late last night. One group of rebels who entered the town a couple of days ago was uh, very heavily surrounded by government troops so we're trying to push through and link up with them clearing the government road of troops. So the uh, chief of staff Sia Sharif is in personal command of the men pushing okay. them through trying to link up with forces at the Iron Gate. The Liberian government says its forces have lost a major bridge close to the capital Monrovia <gasps> during the latest Poor fighting with the rebels. Government statement about the loss of the Po River Bridge <gasps> came after reports that rebel forces were within 20 kilometers of the capital Monrovia. From a checkpoint near the front line, Paul Welsh reports. So good news. You will see tonight people will start moving again, moving into central Monrovia, because when they move to central Monrovia, especially under the eyes of the U.S. Embassy, they feel they're going to be saved. Are they? Absolutely not. Unless America changes its mind to come in and do something immediately, I do think there's going to be another disaster. Say no, say no. So they're fighting in local country. Say no, say no. So they're fighting in Panjama. Say no, say no, to so the fighting in Kola, in Ipoja. Drop your arms and come to town. Drop your arms. Drop your arms and come in peace. Drop your arms. Yes, 
Senin bir ayağımın bir lugan aşağı. He. Early morning, July 19th. With distant sounds of artillery, a rumor spreads that peacekeepers have finally arrived. I was hoping to avoid by having the UN troops come. That's where we're. At. That's that's where we're at now. That's where we're at. We're at right now. We're in some deep trouble. firing across the bridge. I don't know what's going on, but the firing rockets and other stuff. I thought this uh, unit should try to seize everything around here. What's going on, Paul? You tell me, man, because you're there every day. I don't know. I'm tired with this stuff. So when you get back to Tony Blade, you should do something with George Bush. Thank you. No West African peacekeepers. No UN peacekeepers, no American peacekeepers. July 20th, as feared, war crashes into Monrovia. Within hours, government forces lose control of the city. Apparently most of Monrovia is now under control and the rebels seem to have taken minimal casualties. Reports are coming in that thousands of government troops are preparing to surrender, and it only is the uh, executive mansion that is now remaining. Taylor's army finally makes a stand at the two main bridges that lead into downtown Monrovia. It's all that separates them from total defeat. By the end of the day, thousands of Liberians seek the Greystone compound. It is American embassy land given over to house refugees. under your control. The Freeport is under complete control. As you look here, you see right on the wall here, the Freeport of Marovia welcomed, welcomed you. Bomb up bridge up here, bomb up bridge. And the terror, the land, very right far looking down, they lock it up. Anyone else say that for nothing else you are doing here? They probably like the bridge up here. Where do you? You, you can't get a water here for. We're going to put the foot here and they put a bridge like a bridge.
uh, mortaring of the city. It's a terrible human tragedy, and and uh, ending the humanitarian suffering that's going on is is a major objective of ours. Just, uh, we're inserting uh, 41 U.S. Marines from the uh, Fleet Anti-Terrorism uh, Security Team uh, into the uh, U.S. Embassy compound. Uh, they're just cycling uh, through right now, and, uh, and they're coming in stages. It's working great. Fighting enters its fourth day. The unfulfilled promise of peacekeepers is creating anger on the streets. The feeling towards America is shifting. We expected the, the Americans to have come in to assist us, but it seems that our appeal have fallen on deaf ear. So our African brothers need to come on the ground to rescue the Liberian people. Mostly overlooked by the international media, Liberia is suddenly the lead story on the evening news. We're deeply concerned that the uh, condition of the Liberian people is getting worse and worse and worse. And so our uh, commitment is to enable ECOWAS to go in, and the Pentagon will make it clear over time what that means. Uh, secondly, it is very important for Charles Taylor to leave the country. What if I had just high teal out of town three weeks ago? Catastrophe in Liberia. Finally, I said, I'm not going in a place until troops come. Everybody said, oh, yeah, 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 you're right. We need to send some troops in there. Why didn't someone do that before? Why would they let President Bush, his advisors, let President Bush get on the air and make such a provocative statement without giving him all of the facts? They showed the city. If they had broken through our lines, what would have happened? They would have murdered thousands. I actually heard that the, the, the shell that hit the embassy they were able to track it back to... American, American mortars given to Guinea under the pretext of, being, of using it for training purposes. Thousands of them have entered here. Uh, there's very little that anybody can say about this. I said this is a United States covert war and they've got Liberian blood on their hands. The mortar that hit, is, is it true that it came from America? That's something I can't comment on because it's still uh, the uh, under investigation and we have uh, certain... Uh, uh, restraints about talking about cases which are still under investigation. It's a story I slept mm -hmm. because of this one shelling of this thing. I mean, this is not life. Mm -hmm. I'm dying. Can you imagine him being uh, um, him being lying in here for shelter? We are dying. Imagine this should be enjoyment for our kids for the future. So I'm just asking the international war. I'm begging Lloyd, I'm begging Charles Taylor and his entire group to please put an end to this suffering because we have freedom in this country. We should be enjoying this. And now we are running for bullets. Lurches started firing, they started attacking Monrovia again, launched about eight motor rounds uh, about in the last 30 minutes. The government has said they'll fight to the last man. People as a whole are hoping for this force to come very soon, to come in between the warring parties, because this thing is nonsense now. It's getting, it's gotten totally out of hand. Everybody's like undercover or inside, afraid about motor rounds, motor fire, afraid about, about bullets hitting them afraid of rocket fire. 
things, uh, things are intense. Every day, the two sides fight for control of the bridge. But neither side seems able to gain an advantage. It is hard to distinguish rebel soldiers from the government militia. Subin says to look at the logos of the t-shirts or the colors of the bandanas, but that usually doesn't help. There is fighting on the northern edge of the city at the moment as government troops try to outflank the rebels and attack them and cut them off from behind. President George Bush spoke last night, urging President Taylor to step down immediately to bring peace to Liberia. I must say you rude, were you? Yeah? Yes, sir. Don't panic. You know, I had a solution for that. Thank you, sir. Right. Let me tell you. Will the U.S. intervene in Liberia? It's believed that the Pentagon in particular is urging caution, aware of America's current troop commitment in Iraq and possibly still reeling from the memory of President Clinton's catastrophic attempt to intervene in Somalia. War has been a part of life here for so long that these young men have never known peace. For them, Charles Taylor is not only their president, but their father figure as well. How old were you in 1992 when you started? I was seven years. How are you now? Me, I was 17. You want to die for the government and for the people? Yeah. Okay. Yes. I hope you. I hope you don't have to die. I gotta do that for the government. Okay. The bullet are gonna kill me. I can dodge it. No deflector. What this? The one. The one that kill me. I'm fighting for my father. Nothing here. Eat all, sir. Yeah. This is no problem. We gotta move, man. Okay. Recognize my flows can kill and will when I get fly as it's hand bills and still to my boys who dump like landfill. I'm on some hella fly west coast gangster shit with a low down clip ready to unload clips. I got heat for niggas coming out they house for real. Tuck the guns for y'all motherfuckers. Pounds to steal. We're waiting to beat your maker. We can go. Gun that'll make you run like the river and better than all four stepping up. <laughs> Control of the port means control of the food supply to the city. Monrovia is now under siege. So, Mary, 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 what, what's going on here? What's happening here? Okay, the Soviets are trying to loot all over the city. And we don't loot. And we tell them to not loot the city. So you're trying to prevent them from stealing things? Yes, we're trying 
to put them under control to that new city. Headlines at this hour. The co chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Benjamin Yeten, vows to execute state security men found looting and harassing civilians. Money grand. <laughs> General Yetin has ordered all commanders, all officers, and all soldiers of the armed forces of Liberia, anywhere they catch any looters, they should be summarily executed. And that is what happened there. They were caught with items that they had gone and stolen from somebody's house, and they were executed when they were caught with those items at the checkpoint. As fighting intensifies, government soldiers try to cut the rebel supply routes. In this, their only clinic, the Lerd have almost no medical supplies to treat their mounting casualties. Body, body. You know it? You know it? Struggling with their own wounded, the rebels have little to offer the people they claim to have just liberated. The Organization of West African States agrees to send peacekeepers. But without funding, there is no firm date for their arrival. On July 25th, President Bush orders three warships to Liberia with 3,500 Marines. The ships are at least a week away. President Bush has directed the Secretary of Defense to position appropriate U.S. military capabilities off the coast of Liberia. I now ask both Lord and the government of Liberia to cease fire. GOL has accepted this U.S. proposal, and I now call upon Lerd to do the same. Many innocent people are dying in Monrovia. If Lerd has regard for the people of Liberia, it will accept this proposal now. What do you, what do you have in your hand? I'm carrying a bullet. I landed in the house this morning through the kitchen window. Did a uh... Have you heard, are you hearing about the American troops coming? That's what we heard, that's what we heard from... That's what we heard. Trinidad, I get that bullet coming through the window, you better come this way. They are, that's a, they are, they are on a serious launch in that. Who was firing? Where was the firing coming from? They said from... So. <laughs> from the bridge end. I think they're going to be walking. If you are going on the other end, singer end, I will be able to go to find food because I don't have any food here. But if you are going at the grace zone, I won't be able to go because I'm afraid of straight bullets. I got my family, I got my kid, and I'm not going to lose my life for that. They have said that the ship should be here by August 2nd. When they said it, they said it within one week, and I counted the days. It was August 2nd, so we expect them in five days. Medicines are running short. Food is running short. Water is running short. We are in serious trouble. The international community has called for a 10 o'clock ceasefire this morning. Now, the rebels say that they will adhere to that 10 o'clock deadline, but that they are going to push forward as much as possible to take as much territory before that 10 o'clock deadline comes into effect. Welcome. Nothing going to happen here. You are welcome. American Marines on the streets of Monrovia. They've been begged to come here to protect the people and to help make a ceasefire work. 
more are on the way, but it's not clear what they'll do or when. For now, these men are guarding the beer delivery to the embassy. Liberians are losing faith in what they used to call their big brother. Paul Welsh, BBC News, Monrovia, Liberia. July 31st, despite the attack at the Greystone compound, people have returned in droves. Another ceasefire is signed, but food is still not getting in. We would like to systematically measure all the children so that we can get a handle on how many malnourished children there are and what the, the extent of the problem of malnutrition is in the camp. So you can see this child is malnourished. This child is moderately malnourished, uh, but we'll be looking today for the severely malnourished. Okay, this one is in the red. Now, when it gets in the red, that's the size of a film case. Yeah, see, he's at risk here, and he's seven years old. So, um, you know, but he's not eligible for food, so because of the the limit of the amount of food that we have. So, so what are the sandbags for? The sandbags are it's a protective measure for stray bullets. They have been frequent in this yard. Almost every day, we have the situation of one death from street bullet. Street bullet has been a big problem. Uh, yesterday, even, uh, you know, we've had two days of ceasefire, and yesterday we had six bullet wound, uh, bullet wound patients from stray bullets entering the compound. The day before, there was 14. The day before, there was 32. The day before that was 16. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's a big problem. People have a fatigue for war, you know, after they've been through it several times, not just once, but several times, they have a, a, a way of coping. Uh, they know to look for plastic sheeting. They know to get to a certain point that may be safe. Oh, shit. Get that joke. <laughs> All right, let's keep, let's, let's move to a wall. Let's move to a wall. <laughs> yeah, that's your ceasefire. Those are wizards. And there is shooting that's going on. We should, we should move in the building if there's more shooting going on. Does it come just sporadically? It's just sporadically, and it happens every day, and it happens all, t all times of the day. And like I say, it's, it's random, and anybody can be hit any time. The people who get hit, there's nothing to do with the war, really. It has nothing to do with the war. And, uh, yeah, but you can be just as dead, you know, that's the way it is. Many organizations have been promising now for weeks to send peacekeepers here, and there aren't any. And if peacekeepers had come, these people who are dying now would not be dying. In Iraq, three U.S. soldiers have been killed and four... This is very costly. This is money. Gave us, one for the people to give us this money. Yeah. But not for that. You don't want to hold it anymore. We don't want to hold it no more. Yeah, no more. What would you rather hold? Huh? What do you want to hold? I want to hold pain and paper. In a last-ditch effort to take back the port, the government militia launches a final attack. By day's end, they are back where they started. For President Taylor, time and options are running out. The end strategy is to either kill Taylor or disgrace him before the war crimes, the Serenia Court, that's the end game. Maybe the first, maybe I get killed, but I don't think anybody's going to take me from here to any court. I haven't done anything to the Liberian people, and I don't think anybody's going to do that. So if anybody's coming in here with a hostile intention, they better, they better come in fighting, because I, I fight when I have to fight. So when are the U.S. troops coming? Well, we're, we can't actually comment on, on American military movements or composition of, of troops. Uh, but the United States 
has a lot more uh, involvement in Liberia than, than just what it does directly with its own military. Sending a few thousand Marines, beautiful. But America is going to have to dig deep a little bit and let's use Liberia as a litmus test of what America wants to do in this new millennium. This is the heart of the epicenter of destabilization in Western Africa. If we can fix it, all of Western Africa, where about 20% of America's imported petroleum comes from, among many things, will be a much more stable place, a much better component of the world and the world's economy. It's the system that's screwed up, and that's why Mr. Taylor has to leave. August 5th, with three U.S. warships just beyond the horizon, 700 Nigerian peacekeepers arrive, and without firing a single bullet, the fighting ends. We need peace. We need peace. Oh, Liberians, we need peace. We need peace. We need peace. Oh, Liberians, we need peace. We need peace in Liberia to build the capital Monrovia. We need United Liberians, we need peace to make Liberia a strong nation. We need peace, yes, I in Liberia to restore these cities in Liberia. We need United Liberians, we need peace to make Liberia a strong nation. We need peace. Look at our people and our children. They are longing to be free. Look at our people. After years battling each other, the two sides meet on the bridge. The war is finished. Uh -huh. You agree or you agree, it's finished. Because our people need peace. They are all child soldiers. Child soldiers like me. We should be together. Never forget about war. Is the war over? Yeah, the war is over because we are seeing emotion. Thank you very much. This one. We proud of still friends. U.S. Ambassador Blaney and the head of the West African Peacekeeping Force travel across the bridge to meet with General Cobra. The goal, allow humanitarian aid to flow back into the city. Hello. John Well, I think it should be a turning point of the conflict. In fact, uh, that's why I'm here is to try to uh, talk peace and to make sure that the ceasefire is respected that all parties have signed. We can leave the poor by Iroquois. He had to leave Liberia totally. Resign and leave Liberia. And we will, we will leave the port with the International Peacekeeping Force. All summer long, Charles Taylor claimed he would leave the country when peacekeepers arrived. On August 10th, he broadcasts his farewell speech to the nation. Today is a very important day in my life, and indeed, may I say, in the existence of our nation. These are very, very tough times. I have decided that I will relinquish the powers of the presidency to the vice president at midday tomorrow. Could we continue fighting? Yes. But above all else, the people must matter. I say to my colleagues, the chairman of the African Union, the chairman of ECOWAS, Africa is at a crossroads. This new one world government, we must be very careful 
Decisions are not being made in our capitals. They are being made in foreign capitals. The Liberian people must be left to determine their destiny. country. I say to you today, this Sunday afternoon, I forgive you. You've been very good to me through the grace of God, and I love you from the bottom of my heart. I will always remember you wherever I am. And I say to you, God willing, I will. As Taylor's plane takes off for Nigeria, the lured burst into celebration. Their four-year quest is ending. Within hours of Taylor's departure, the three U.S. warships that were beyond the horizon for over a week become visible from the shore. Out on the water, it's awesome. That does not help us. I mean, I, in no way has America helped us to date, uh, that I can see. Uh, they, they, there may be Big Brother out there, so everybody thinks they're going to fear them, but it's not true. These little Pekings know they're out there. They're not here. If um, the United States, ECOWAS, the U.N. doesn't do something decisive, next few days we might descend back into chaos. Right now it's, this is a very fragile situation, very volatile. It just takes one idiot with a gun to set, to set, to put us back to square one. No one knows exactly how many people died this summer. Many are left on roads and in ditches to rot. Others die from hunger and disease and are never counted. Hundreds are buried with no record or memory. It said that um, there are more than 400 bodies here already. There are four graves. Some have 50 bodies, like I said, down here has about 50. So there's another one down there, I think 39. There's another one over there, it's 70 something. And then there's this one. And today they're bringing 70 more bodies. They told me that you were there, but I like it. So what are you gonna do? You wanna stand here and look, watch as they dig yes. the bodies down and see yes. if he is? Yes, I will be brave to do it. So look at as they take down each body, then you look at him. Yes. Who is he? Is he your brother? He is my sister's son. My sister's son. Honestly, you are telling me I do the first thing.
Rebecca. Rebecca, a girl, age five. Last address, Virginia. Today on the program, we will announce the names of lost children which have been found. The Red Cross knows where these children are. They are looking for their parents. Have we seen the last alert in your opinion? Uh, if, we, if we do the DDR correct, yes. If, we, if, we, if it's screwed up and we don't reintegrate these people, disarm them, demobilize them, then yes, we'll see it again. It's like starting over. We're at the very bottom. You can't get any worse than what it is. You start over. It's, if, it's, if the foundation is put in correctly, then... Here comes your man. All right. I got to go. Okay. I'll see you later. No, a successful mission? What's that? Are you successful? I'm working on it. The military is stretched. These boys were just in Iraq for six months. You know, so you, know, you have to be concerned about your own military. And uh, they're going to be professional. They're going to do an outstanding job. And uh, I rate it as being very high. But then again, I'm, I could be a little biased because of my profession. But uh, I, I think uh, it's going to get done. Our troops are here performing a mission, and we have taken every precaution to make it uh, uh, one that will be safe. And it's also extremely important to relieve the suffering of hundreds of thousands of people who otherwise will not get food to eat, medicine, or water uh, to, to, to live. Uh, to live.
The students say they want education but not war. Say no, say no to the fighting in Lopakante. Say no.